Hello everyone! It's me again, Teacher John. This tutorial is for statistics and probability, a subject which is intended for grade 11 senior high school students in the Philippines. For today's objectives, at the end of the lesson, the learners will be able to Computes for the test statistic value of the population mean. Draws conclusion about the population mean based on the test statistic value and the rejection region. And solves problem involving test of hypothesis on the population mean. The topic for today is still under hypothesis testing. So we have the test statistic value of the population mean. So as discussed previously, we have the test statistic. We have the z-test, which is used when the population variance or the standard deviation is known. And it is also used when our sample size is greater than or equal to 30 by virtue of the central linear theorem. So the formula for the z-test, so we have the formula wherein the mu sub 0 equals the claimed population mean, the sigma is a population standard deviation, the x-bar is the sample mean, and n is the sample size. So we also have the t-test. So it is used when the population variance or the standard deviation is unknown. Also, it is used when the sample size is less than 30. So for the formula, so we have still the mu sub O is the claimed population mean. So we have the S for the sample standard deviation. X bar is still the sample mean and N is the sample size. So here, uh, from the standard deviation, from the z-test, so it's only replaced by the sample standard deviation because the population variance and the population standard deviation is unknown for t-test. So for the decision rule, so for z-test and for t-test, so it's actually um, just the same. So if the computed value is greater than or equal to the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. And if it is less than the critical value or the computed value is less than the critical value, we do not reject the null hypothesis or we accepted the null hypothesis. And take note, so the negative sign of the computed value of z or t it is disregarded when comparing it to the critical value of z or t if the hypothesis is non-directional. So we have the two-tailed or one-tailed on the left side. Why? Because um, on the left side of our normal distribution, so those are the negative values. So we disregard that when we are comparing the computed value. or We disregard the sign. So we have the basic steps in hypothesis testing. So first, we state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Then we specify the level of significance and the sample size. Then we identify which test statistic to use. It's either z-test or t-test. Then we identify the critical region or the decision rule. So that is actually based on the level of significance. And then we have the computation of the test statistics. So whether it's z-test or t-test. So we compute. And then next is the decision rule or and the conclusion. So the decision rule or and the conclusion is based on the computation of the z and the critical region. So, 
So for example, so suppose we have a random sample of n equals 25 measurements of chest circumference from a population of newborns with a standard deviation of 0 0.7 inches and the sample mean equals 12.6 inches. The confidence interval is 95%. So the question is, is it likely that the population mean has the value of 13 inches? So first, we state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So we have the null hypothesis is mean equals 13. And for our alternative hypothesis, so we would say that the mean is not equal to 13. So, if you remember, so for alternative hypothesis, we use the symbol not equal to, so meaning this is a two-tailed uh, test. So, for step two, we specify the level of significance and the sample size. So, for the confidence interval, we have 95%. So, we will have the level of significance at 0 0.05. And then our sample size is? 25. So next step, we identify the test statistic, whether it's C-test or T-test. So from the previous slide, so our sample size is 25, but for our problem, we have the given, which is the population standard deviation. So the test statistic that we'll be using is Z-test for two-tailed test. So next, we identify the critical region. So from our alpha, we have 0 0.05. So that is equivalent to 1.96 if we look it up on the table. So we reject our null hypothesis, which is mean equals 13, if the calculated Z is greater than or equal to 1.96. Now for step 5, we would compute and remember, so we disregard the negative sign since we are having a two-tailed test. So disregard the negative sign if we actually have a computed value of a negative. So just substitute all the values. From the formula. So we have the 12.6 for the sample mean and then for the population mean is 13. So we divide that so by 0.7 which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample which is 25. So we would get negative 0.4 divide 0.14 which is negative 2.86. So now we will be comparing, so we disregard the negative size, we will be comparing 2.86 and the critical region 1.96 to get our decision. So we reject the null hypothesis since our calculated Z, which is 2.86, is greater than the critical value 1.96. So therefore, it is not likely that the chest circumference of the babies is 13 inches. Next, we have example number two. A study shows that the average score of the applicants who took the entrance examination was 45, with a standard deviation of 5.15. Is there a reason to believe that the present examinees is better than the previous? Result, if a random sample of 13 applicants showed an average score of 46.34, use 0.01 level significance. So again, first step, we state the null and the alternative hypothesis. So for our null hypothesis, so we have mean equals 45. And for our alternative hypothesis, mean is greater than 45. So why is it that we use greater than? So from our problem, 
So we have there the keyword better than. So which means it's greater than. Okay, so next step. So specify the level of significance and the sample size. So level of significance is given on the problem, which is 0 0.01. And the sample size is 36. Next, for step 3, we identify the test statistic, whether it's Z-test or T-test. So, we will be using Z-test, one tail, which is at the right side. So, step 4, we identify the critical region, which is 2.33. So, we have the level of significance 0 0.01. So, its value is 2.33 for two, a one tail test. So we would reject the null hypothesis mean equals 45 if the calculated z is greater than 2.33. And for step 5, so we would compute. So we can just substitute the values from the formula. So we would have 46.34 minus 45 divided by 5.15 over square root of 36. So it will give us 1.56. Now for our conclusion or decision, we would compare the computed Z 1.56 and the critical region 2.33. So for that, we do not reject the null hypothesis since the calculated Z 1.56 is less than the critical value 2.33. So our conclusion we therefore conclude that the claim that the present examinist is better than the previous is incorrect. Next example. So, the mean content of 25 bottles of brand A, orange juice, is 355 ml with a sample standard deviation of 10 ml. Is this in line with the manufacturer's claim that the bottle contains an average of 360 ml? Use 0 0.01 level of significance. So for step one, so we state the null and alternative hypothesis. So for our null hypothesis, mean equals 360. And the alternative is mean is not equal to 360. Then step 2, specify the level of significance and the sample size. So our level of significance is 0 0.01. And our sample size is 25. So for step 3, we identify the test statistics that is to be used. So we know that our sample size is less than 30. So we will be using a t-test. So with the degrees of freedom 24 since it's supposed to be n minus 1. So that is for two-tailed. So for step 4, we identify the critical region. So under the degrees of freedom 24, and our significance level of 0 0.01. So the, our critical region is 2.797. So we would reject our null hypothesis mean equals 360 if the calculated T is greater than or equal to 2.797. Next, we have to compute. So we would uh, disregard the negative sign if we are comparing it to the critical value. So since we are using non-directional, which is two-tailed. So we have the formula, then we will just have to substitute the values. So we have 355 minus 360 divided by 10 over square root of 25. So it will give us negative 2.5. So again, we disregard the negative sign. So we will be comparing 2.5 and 2.797. So 
So, for our decision and conclusion, so, we do not reject the null hypothesis mean equals 360 since our calculated T, which is 2.5, is less than the critical value 2.797. So, therefore, the manufacturers claim that the bottle contains an average of 360 ml is correct. For a last example, sample number 4, the average amount of rainfall during the summer months is 8.12 inches. A researcher in Pag-asa selects a random sample of 15 provinces and finds that the average amount of rainfall last year was 7.42 inches with a standard deviation of 1.3 inches. At 0.05 level of significance, can it be concluded that the mean rainfall last year was below 8.12 inches. So for our step one, we would state our null and alternative hypothesis. So for our null hypothesis, so we have mean equals 10.52 and our alternative is mean is less than 10.52. So we have the keyword there, below. That's why we use the less than symbol. For our second step, we specify the level of significance and the sample size. So from the level of significance, it says that it's 0 0.05 and our sample is 15. So it says 15 provinces, so n equals 15. For the third step, so, again, we identify the test statistic, whether it's C-test or T-test. So, we will use the T-test since our sample size is less than 30. So, that's one tail below. And then, we would use degrees of freedom of 14 since our sample size is 15 and degrees of freedom is N-1. And step 4 is the critical region. So, under the degrees of freedom 14, one tailed test, and a 0 0.05 significance level. So our critical region is 1.761. So we would re reject our null hypothesis mean equals 10.52 if our calculated T is greater than 1.761. So next we would be computing for the T. So since it's one tail and it's on the left side, so we would disregard the sign when comparing it to the critical value. So using the formula again, so just substitute the values. So we will have 7.42 minus 8.12 divided by 1.3 over square root of 15. So we will have negative 2.06. So again, we disregard the negative sign. So we'll be comparing 2.06 and 1.761. Then we will have our decision and our conclusion based on the comparison. And for our decision, we would reject the null hypothesis since the calculated T of 2.06 is greater than the critical value 1.761. So therefore, it cannot be concluded that the mean rainfall last year was below 8.12 inches. So we're done for today and thank you very much. I hope you learned a lot and see you in our next lesson. Bye!